New text messages dropped yesterday, Wednesday, and the SEX trafficking case against Diddy, and a Manhattan judge ruled that Diddy is staying locked up until trial. The judge, Andrew Carter, shut down Diddy's offer for home detention and electronic monitoring on um, the $50 million bill, backing um, the earlier decision to keep him in jail. So during the hearing, the prosecutor, Emily Johnson, used texts between Diddy and his alleged victims to argue why he shouldn't be released. She also read out messages that Diddy allegedly sent to Cassie after the infamous caught on video attack. Remember that? Diddy texted her, call me. The cops are here. I got six kids. You, please call. I'm surrounded. You're going to abandon me all alone? She replied, I have a black eye and a fat lip. You are sick for thinking it's okay to do what you've done. I still have crazy bruising. Johnson also read messages an unnamed victim wrote to Diddy that said, you always want to show me that you have the power and you knock me around. I'm not a ragdoll. I'm someone's child. You guys, I want to read the whole transcript to you. It's wild. Diddy's lawyer, he's supposed to be like a top-notch lawyer, but he's just... He's just terrible right now. I guess because this situation is so bad and they don't really have much to work with because that's how bad this is for Diddy. Let me tell you, his lawyer was throwing everything at the wall, hoping something stick. It was so bad. It was so bad that the judge was like, get to the point. And your point is, the judge even said, what love got to do? got to do with it i'm so serious the judge asked what's love got to do with it because diddy's lawyer was trying to say that the whole beating was a part of their toxic love because they were in love oh my gosh <laughs> i'm going to read the transcript you guys before i do make sure you like this video as it helps this channel a lot and please subscribe and make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any updates okay now let's get to the transcript because it is crazy diddy's lawyer forget diddy's lawyer because this guy the prosecutors did not come to play listen this trial better be open to the public like the johnny depp and amber Heard trial it better be it better be public because this case is going to be woo. but yeah let's get to the transcript so this was yesterday wednesday and diddy was in the courtroom with the same black t-shirt and the sweatpants that he had on when they arrested him so he haven't showered so he is sitting at the defense table with two u.s marshals sitting behind him waiting on judge andrew carter andrew l carter so they're like all rise government so emily johnson the prosecutor started she said the freak offs were elaborate they began in 2009 and extended into this year these freak offs were arranged with his entourage the defendant used narcotics so that the victims would continue ketamine ghb and others the defendant would record these freak offs at least in part to use them to blackmail we have an email a victim says you are going to make me i'm not going to say it on the public record or you were going to leak some fo freak off ish a different victim wrote he said he was going to expose me with the sex tape i was d-r-u-g-e you know d-r-u-g-g-e-d that's just two example and it's so and it's so it's rich when the defendant submission filed today accuses the victim of extorting he's the only extorter we seized six guns they were in the defendant's home and he had access to them we are focused on the defaced guns and defendant's closet 
This is not about security, but dangerousness. The security team is the same one he says would monitor him. The head of his security has not been served with a subpoena, given what we've learned about his role in the offense conduct. Now, about the hotel assault. Yesterday, defense counsel called it a fight and a relationship, but it's trafficking. The defendant had a freak off on March 5th, 2016. We have evidence there was one commercial XEX worker there in the room during the assault. Oh yeah, that night she had finished with a freak off when he chased after her and okay, so she isn't even wearing shoes. She is in danger. Defendant storms out in a towel. We have a message from the victim. I still have crazy bruising. He claims he wanted to get his clothes back, but that's not what happened here. She tried to escape a room with a defendant and a commercial SEX worker, and she fled without shoes. So Diddy and his lawyers tried to lie and said that Cassie stole his clothes and ran out. That's why Diddy chased her and did what he did. Are you kidding me? So why would, why would Cassie steal his clothes and then leave her shoes behind? Come on. Why would Cassie need his clothes? They need to make it make sense because this is not it. And there were some idiots that were saying, oh, she stole his money. That, were, that was his money in the bag, you know. But this freaking lawyer in Diddy is saying she stole his clothes. Oh, my gosh. But let's keep going. Immediately after the assault, the defendant sent these messages. Call me. The cops are here. I got six kids. Yo, please call. I am surrounded. You're going to abandon me all alone? The defendant knew he had done something that could elicit police response. So he basically lied and said police was there when no one called the police. She didn't call the police. So he wanted her to call him. So he made up that lie that police was there. You're going to abandon me. I'm surrounded. You see? You see the mind games? Okay, so he covered up what he did this year. After the surveillance video came out, only then did he admit that it was him. Yesterday, it was claimed that his clothes was, were taken. But that's not what happened. Why drag the victim back down the hall to the room? The indisputable evidence makes clear you cannot take the defendant at his word. March 5th, 20. 16 is far from the defendant's lone act of violence and obstruction. Freak off activity is the core of this case. They use force, coercion, and DRUGS. Our investigation is ongoing. Half a dozen escorts is just the tip of the iceberg of the number of escorts who have participated in these freak offs. This case is charged a SEX trafficking by force, fraud, and coercion. The acts were not consensual. This was a SEX trafficking ring, okay? This was a big business. He was recording. I bet your people had memberships. They would tune in live while it was happening because it would last for days. Remember, Cassie said it, the freak-offs would last for days. So you know they had to be high on D-R-U-G-S for them to last for days. Oh, yeah, they were on some strong, yeah, D-R-U-G-S because there's no way you could do this sober because your body would be would be numb, you would be in pain. And not only that, she was not the only one he was pimping. He was passing around to SEX workers, to higher ups, CEOs. He was also pimping out your favorites, other celebrities. You see, trafficking, SEX trafficking is a billion dollar business. 
It's a billion dollar industry. And it's bigger than Diddy. Remember that, it's bigger than Diddy. A lot of them, if not all of them, are part of that nasty business. They've participated, they even invested in those SEX trafficking rings. Okay? So it's bigger than Diddy. It's a huge, huge business. But let's keep going. The defense is arguing that anyone and a freak off wanted to be there. That's not the law. When people are threatened with exposure and are beaten, they cannot consent. That is trafficking. Victims' heads were slammed against car windows. Here are some texts. When you get effed up, you knock me around. I'm not a rag doll. I'm someone's child. We have witnesses who witness the injuries. This conduct happened behind closed door and houses, hotel rooms, cars. Judge Tarnovsky was concerned. Judge Tarnovsky Tarnovsky found that she did not believe the defense counsel can control the defendant. Consider the Mercedes case in this circuit, reversing a decision to release a defendant. Let's turn to obstruction. Witnesses have expressed extreme fear of him. They have directly contacted a victim in November 2023. Constant contact with witnesses to the charge conduct after subpoena before government interviews. Two of these examples are there are communi communications between the defendant and a witness, 13 contacts. Judge Carter asked, 13 contacts with two people? The prosecutor says, sorry, 14 contacts between the defendant and the witness. Also, he outreached to a witness he had not been in contact with for several years. After the grand jury subpoena, he used intermediaries. So that means he used someone else. He used a third party, a middleman, to do the job, okay? He recorded the conversation on another person's device. In November 2023, he twice called a victim. On November 19th, he received a text from this other person in response. It reads, I feel like I'm reading my own sexual trauma. Three pages, my experience. The defendant called her and gaslit her, trying to convince her it has been consensual. Wow. So... So when Cassie lawsuit came out, a victim call, well, texted Diddy saying, wow, it's like I'm reading my own sexual trauma. Three pages of what Cassie document um, said. She said those were her experience. She said that to him, the victim, this victim. And Diddy called her. And trying to gaslight her, trying to lie, make her believe that, oh, you're not a victim. It was consensual. What you did, what I had you do, what we did was consensual. You see? Oh, my goodness. So let me read that part again. The defendant called her and gaslit her, trying to convince her it has been consensual. He repeatedly said he was not supposed to be speaking on the phone. He tells the witness not to text him. The defendant said, if support, nothing to worry about, money. Wow. So he, so he offered her money. Like, you have nothing to worry about. I got you. I got you, like financially. The defendant wrote, his financial advisor should not make a mistake and not get that rent paid. This was obstruction. We cite U.S. 
versus Lafontaine, a defendant who fed a false narrative. That's what's going on here. I'll go over the cases. Judge Carter said, that's not necessary. I'm familiar with those cases. The prosecutor says, a recent civil suit. Last week, Dawn Richard filed a civil suit. She was in a ban also with Ms. Harper. Ms. Harper issued a statement after 128 phone contacts by Diddy. So Ms. Harper, Kalina, yeah, that hag, the one that came out and was like, oh, Diddy was always good to me. Oh, no, no, you know? Yeah. So now we know she, well, I, we knew she was lying. Well, I knew she was lying from those statements. But now we have proof that he was threatening her. He called her 128 times. Well, whether it's calls, whether it's texts, he made contacts. He had contacts with her 128 times, okay? So that's why she came out and said, oh, I didn't see anything. When Dawn came out the other day, and then Kalina came and said, oh, I didn't see, I didn't see Diddy abuse Cassie, da 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 That was not my experience. All these uh, artists are disgruntled. Yeah, so she was lying. Of course, she was lying. But now we know why. Because he offered her money. Of course, we knew, I knew that. And she's afraid of him. Oh my goodness. The prosecutor says, we didn't deal with Lawrence Ray's case. Magistrate Judge Fox ordered detention, even on one victim. But the judge found that corroborated by documentary, corroborated by documentary evidence. The judge says, anything else? The prosecutor says a few more things. The judge says, how many? The prosecutor says, three minutes. Traveling to New York does not address danger to the community. I am here seeking detention, but I note that the bail package does not have enough conditions that focus on obstruction, and it couldn't. He's been involving other people. The defendant should be detained pending trial, the judge asked defense. Now, Combs' lawyer, Mark Agnifilo, says, let me start with Ms. Harper. I was called by her and a lawyer. I said, do what you want, make a statement or not. I later found out that she did. Combs' second lawyer, Tini Garago, says, Ms. Harper felt she was being besmirched, meaning damaged, like her reputation was, was being ruined. We did speak with her at 2 a.m. on the 11th, the judge says. After speaking, what would be the reason for Mr. Combs to continue contacting her? Garago says she was concerned she was in the media. Agnifilo says, I have brought today the head of Sage Intelligence. We are proposing that Sage Intelligence personnel, all former law enforcement, will be monitoring the, the residents of Mr. Combs 24-7. They will have one or two employees there at all times. Agnifilo continues, there will be a visitor log, only pre-approved could come in. We could give the list to the court. Mr. Combs will not have a cell phone or access to the or access to the internet. That way, no witness intimidate, intimidation completely nullified. Having sage intelligence on site will do what what we have to do. Even three there. If don't if don't believe that Mr. Combs' actions in coming to New York are only about risk of flight, it shows he is deeply respectful of the court's authority. He is responsible. Mr. Combs knew he was under investigation and gave us his passport. This is not defense lawyer theater. We took the passports of five of his family members. We have a letter of intent to sell his airplane. We had three buyers who then 
work out. Can you get to the point the judge asked? It shows he's trustworthy. He's not a defendant who says, come find me. And Maxwell and Epstein, how does, the judge ask, how does that relate to danger and obstruction? If he was, if he was aware in April, why was he contacting witnesses? And then the judge says, a woman contacted him, said she, she had gotten a subpoena. We told him, don't speak to her. The judge says, talk to me about danger. Agnifilo says, people who, are a, people who are a danger are people who are contemptuous of the court. But Mr. Combs has never been contemptuous of the court. He had a case in New York in 1999. He came to court every time. He shows up on time. You know, that court where, you know, with, uh, with J-Lo and Shine, the thing that happened uh, at the club with the G-U-N mm-hmm, and all that. Yeah. Okay. Then the judge asked, under your plan, would, would he will have employees? Uh, Agnifilo says... They handle his finances. They are in California. The judge says, would he be able to leave his residence? Then the lawyer, then his lawyer says, no. The judge says, and the security, they could be there in the house? Agnifilo says, yes, and shifts. We could put cameras filming 24 hours a day. They could do spot checks. He doesn't use the internet. We can make it as secure as we need to make it. There are already cameras there. Of course. The judge says, that video is troubling. He was 40-something years old. Agnifilo, he realized he has a problem with DRUG addiction and an anger he has anger issues. <laughs> he went into a rehab program for a period of time. I don't believe that, but okay. Anyway, the women in the video also went into rehab at around the same time. Agnifilo, they loved each other. <laughs> Here we go. The written messages are heartbreaking. The SEX and the violence were totally separate, motivated by separate things. They, the way, well, a lot of, wait, what? A lot of errors. The way they chose to be intimate, intimate, they could bring a third person on. Wait, let me read this again. They loved each other. The written messages are heartbreaking. The SEX and the violence were totally separate. <laughs> yeah, what? Motivated by separate things. The way they chose to be intimate, they would bring a third person on. They chose that. So he's saying that those two, like, the, the violence and the SEX are separate things. <laughs> and he said... Diddy and Cassie both decided to bring people in, you know, like to have SEX. She wasn't forced. Yeah, okay. Okay, so the judge says, what does that have to do with him punching her, throwing a vase at her? What's love got to do with that? Agnifilo says that was jealousy from infid infidelity in both directions. Mr. Combs and this other person. The violence is from that. <laughs> so, so, so all that, so the punching and him throwing a vase at her is because of jealousy and the cheating. So they were saying, so, so the judge, oh, this judge is, yeah, he has nothing to work with. 
this is so tough for him because they say he's a top notch, like top notch judge. Okay, so for this guy to be pulling at like, yeah, this is, yeah, that means it's so bad that this guy, a lawyer, who, I mean, law, lawyers are liars, right? They are good liars. And for him, for this lawyer to just not making sense and his explanations are terrible. Yeah, that's how bad this Diddy case is. That's how bad. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so... Let's do this. Let me read this again. What does that have to do with him punching her, throwing a vase, a vase at her? What's love got to do with that? Agnifilo says that was jealousy from infidelity in both directions. So saying they both were cheating on each other. Mr. Combs and this other person. The violence is from that. The judges ask, what is your point? And you say they invited a third person in? If that person is a commercial SEX worker and they travel across state lines, isn't that a problem? And Diddy Lawyer says, I've spoken with the agency. They say they are not paid for SEX, but if they feel like it, what? You see what I'm saying? Like, it's so bad that even the best lawyers, one of the top, best lawyers is having a hard time lying for this guy like it's not even making sense oh wow the former government of new york he did this and he was not prosecuted they are prosecuting mr combs for it see he's he's even bringing up other people former government of new york did the same thing that did he did and he okay you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah, this lawyer is struggling big time. Yeah, Diddy is, yeah. He's not going to win this. But at least I thought this lawyer was going to, like, I don't know. Let's keep going. The judge even said, let's get back to that video in the physical beating. Why isn't that relevant to dangerousness? Diddy's lawyer says, it's not SEX trafficking. What? Even if you don't trust him, trust the bond package. 50 million bond, no internet. Sage, that will give the court comfort that he is not a flight risk. Then he can prepare for his trial. We had known this was coming. He could have run in March. And... Ignifilo, Diddy's lawyer says, he was an actual altar boy. <laughs> the judge asks, how far back are we going? <laughs> oh my God. Diddy lawyer says, he watches a sermon every day. He has done a great deal to earn the court's trust. I ask you to release him. Wow. He was an actual altar boy. That was like what? That was 50 years ago. (laughs) Also, boy, what does this have to do with this? You see what I mean? This lawyer. Oh, my gosh. That's how bad this case is. Oh, wow. I know this lawyer is pissed. I don't know if he's lost any case, but this will be his first loss okay this case right here this diddy trial will be his first loss because this lawyer he's struggling big time big time that's how bad like he can't even come up with any good lies okay so The judge says, I've heard from the parties. I find that the government have proven the defendant is a danger. Regarding the bail package, it is insufficient even on risk of flight. Sean Combs will remain detained. So let's do the initial conference. And then the prosecutor 
says the discovery will include photographs of physical evidence from the March searches and from this week, including frequent supplies. There are a large number of electronic devices. Wow. Did he? Yeah, they have a lot of the, the videos. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, a lot of videos. They have the freak offs, the blackmailing videos. Oh my goodness. Okay. We have 35 full extractions ready to produce to the defense. We request a status conference in approximately 90 days. And then Diddy Lawyer says, given that he'll be in the SHU. And the MDC, I can't for now consent to any exclusion under the Speedy Trial Act. The judge says, I can set a trial date if you want. If I can't try it, I can find a colleague who can. Diddy lawyer says, let me speak with the government. He whispers with four prosecutors. Meanwhile, Garago is whispering to Diddy. And then Diddy lawyer Agnifilo says, how about a conference in 14, 20 day, in 14 to 20 days? The judge says, what's your position on speedy trial? Diddy lawyer says, I'm not prepared to waive it. The judge says, first, the date, October 9th at 2 p.m. The prosecutor says, we have to exclude time under the speedy trial act. Diddy lawyer says, I can't consent. I'll know on October 9th. The judge says, I'll exclude, I exclude time to then. We received some calls to, the judge says, we received some calls today from people who say they have evidence for this case. Oh my gosh. We referred them to the U.S. Attorney's Office. What about the local rule? The prosecutor says, we wanted to flag defense counsel's comments about the victim. We are not requesting action. Duty lawyer says, it would be better if he's put in excess county correctional facility that in the MDC. The prosecutor says, the designation authority is entirely given to the BOP. I don't know where there is anything the court can do to put its thumb on the scale. The judge says, get me a joint letter on this by Monday, September 23rd. We are adjourned. Wow. Yeah, so that's the transcript. So, oh yeah. See, Diddy lawyer. Diddy's lawyers, they having a hard time with this case coming up with excuses, coming up with lies. Because you see what they're coming up with doesn't make sense. They were in love. How is that love? In what, what world? <laughs> love. There was no love between these two. No love at all. She didn't even like him in the beginning. She never liked him. She didn't find him attractive. She said that she did not find him attractive at all, right? And he kept on, he kept on, he kept on, he kept on, and yeah. So she wanted a career, her music career to, you know, and he and Diddy being disgusting and a pervert and an abuser, he took advantage of her. So this love thing they were in love yeah it's stupid it makes no sense no one believes that because if you love someone you don't hurt them you don't beat on them you don't pass them around to other men while you you know what <laughs> you don't do that you don't do that you don't share them you don't abuse them blackmail them I mean, abuse them like that, like she's a piece of, like, my gosh, like the way he mistreat, the way he, and then, because Dawn said, 
he threw a a hot pan of of eggs at Cassie. And he was like, B, I told you, you know, make my eggs. You never make it right. You know, and he threw the hot pan at her. And this is love? Please. Please. So they are full of ish. His lawyer and Diddy, full of ish. And they are having a hard time. And I love it. I love it. I do. They are struggling big time. And that's good. That is good. So, yeah, but Naomi Campbell, Mary J. Blige. Oh, yeah. They've slept with Cassie, too. You better believe it. You better believe Cassie was being passed around to other women, too. Three sums, four sums, five sums, seven sums, orgies, okay? Believe me. Believe me when I tell you. Naomi Campbell was a part of the whole trafficking, okay? Oh, yeah. She slept with Cassie. One-on-one, three-on-one, whatever. She slept with Cassie one-on-one, just the two of them. And she also slept with her, with Diddy and others. Mary J. Blige as well. These people are sickos, okay? These people are sickos. Big time sickos. They are not like us, like us. Not at all. They are not like us, okay? Normal people, because we are normal. These people are not normal. The things that they are into, demonic things that they are into, they are sick. They are sick. That's why if you if you are in their world, you have to sign NDAs. You have to sign NDAs because of the things that they are into, the things that they do, the rituals. Just sick. Just sick people. So no one in their right mind would want to even be down with them. Even when I, like, I don't know. I never cared for celebrities. Like, I've never really, like... When I was little, really young, I had a few crushes on people. I look back now, I'm like, ew. I'm like, yuck. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to even say two, two of the people that I had a crush on. My gosh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So... Yeah, I'm anti-celebrity worship. I've always... I don't understand people who worship these people. Who... Anyways. <laughs> I don't want to make this video too long. So, you guys. um, Yeah. That was the transcript. And this case. This trial. I'm ready. I'm ready. Justice... For all the victims, Diddy has done a lot of damages. He has destroyed a lot of people. He destroyed the black community. He destroyed a lot of people. A lot of people, men, women, boys, girls, everyone. So, yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and please like this video as it helps a lot trying to grow my channel. I think I'm shadow banned because I took that five year break because it's just, that's the thing. YouTube want to keep, that's why people, a lot of people, they've been there for 10 years. They never take breaks because once you take a break, it's over. It's over. That's how they keep you. They keep you on lock. You know, because I'm telling you, I came back after five years and <laughs> it's just a struggle. It's just like, my gosh, you know. So, all right, guys, see you on the next one. Peace.